workshop, so do we try to be very concrete on, and, very, and focus on how to structure a municipal platform. Uh, we will focus on how to build a strong organization and whatever this means, this, it has three crucial points. The organizational structure, the democratic decision making and the information flow. And then there is something that underpins each and every municipalist platform and movement that is the composition of different subjectivities and diver as diverse as grassroots social movements and uh, old school parties. So to, to talk about this and to focus the discussion and to start our discussion, we will have uh, four speakers. That, uh, one is Yolanda Sacher, so Barcelona in Comú, our host organization, so I think it does not deserve much presentation. Then Michela Antonucci of Massa Critica from Naples. Uh, Massa Critica has crossed the last uh, municipal election, not presenting its own list, so it is this kind of experience. And they, opting, they, they opted for a dialectical tactic to impose uh, a political program in the a political agenda to whoever had the intention to be running the elections. And now the, the magistrates is the mayor of the city. They are in this, in a reorganizing this new open situation. <coughs> and then she will talk us about that. Then we have er Erjan. Erjan of the Diabakil Metropolitan Municipality. Sorry for the pronunciation. They are in a critical situation right now, no? the, with the co-mayor arrested and the municipality put under a uh, forced administration by the Turkish government. And the Democratic Society Congress, of which they are part of, is a worldwide no similar experience of composition of very diverse subjectivity and reinventing the, the democracy in a really hostile environment. So we have the opportunity of listening about this very interesting experience. And Cali of Co Cooperation Jackson, that is another kind of platform. Uh, it's a cooperative network based in Jackson, Mississippi, and that consists of four institutions, a federation of local workers cooperatives, a cooperative incubator, and a training center for the cooperation, and a cooperative bank. So a uh, different kind of management platform, let's say. So the structure of the workshop we will be of 10 minutes presentation from each of the speakers. Then we will have 15 minutes for questions and uh, comments to the speakers. And finally, we will have an open discussion on the, on the three points I have mentioned before. So I will just, Yolanda. Hi, everybody. My name is Yolanda. I'm from Barcelona in Comun. I joined Barcelona in Comun halfway through, like early, <laughs> early 2015, although I wanted to try to provide you some context what was Spain in those years. I mean, in, from 2009, as you know, we hit like really bad with a economical and a political crisis. And then there was a huge discontentment of people and everybody wants to do something. Uh, we want an, accept the situation and the institutions, they were in failure. I mean, they were disappointed citizens. And, um, so in 2011, there was a huge movement called the uh, 15th of M, the May. So where we took the streets, the squares, and the social media, and we tried to uh, conscience people like, Another way of doing politics was possible. So this was the situation. So in 2014, Wanyem, it was a platform uh, with people from, like citizens from the activism, that they, they want to present a cadena, oh sorry, <laughs> cadency um, to win the elections. So first of all, what we had is uh, the initiative. There was just people, current people, citizens, they want this enough is enough, we have to change things. So first of all, they write a manifesto and we find 
has got a huge leadership from Ada Colau, which is an activist that uh, had a huge impact. And during those years, the, she has a lot of social and media projection because she was the face of a platform in order to stop the evictions that re really hate people, hit people and during those years. So um, <clears throat> it was no question that she will uh, be our leadership. And then we need something else, like we need a val validation from people, from the people from Barcelona. Then what we had is to set the goal, like to reach, th I mean, Barcelona has like 1.5 million people, and we set the goal to gather like three, third, uh, sorry, 30,000 signatures of people who really want to to join the manifesto and also to open an invitation to the uh, progressive parties, the left-wing parties to join us. But it has to be clear that we want to make a um, citizen platform, a municipalist platform. It wasn't to be like parties. It has to be something different. So in that moment, I mean, in less than two months, we gather more than our goal. And then we started to initiate the negotiations with those um, parties. And it was uh, the moment that we decided like, we have to, to create a political ethic code in order to uh, set um, the principles how to make things different in order to limit, for, for example, the terms, the salaries, because the people, the citizens, they were suffer so much, they made a huge sacrifice, so everybody has to join in the same direction. Then we started the negotiations. Um, people in that moment was key, the generosity of the parties, because they um, understood the situation they want to gather for the common good of the people and leave their strategies aside and start working like really seriously about this. And we were in that moment five parties. Uh, one of them dropped because for us, the key thing is we wanted to win the election. It was no other way that we have to change situation and the change was from the bottom to up. Um, then, after this, this period of time that we worked for the ethical code, we, we signed it, and then from that moment, uh, Barcelona and Como was born, and we started another, a new phase of the, um, of the process. Um, in that moment, it was February of 2015 and our elections were in May. I mean, everything was madness, everything was in a rush, and we have to build up the organization alongside the, um, the election campaign and everything. The way that we do it in that moment, it was the only time that we accept, like every political party has to have a share. And then we have, um, we elected a coordination committee, which party have uh, different representatives in order to share that they have. And it was temporary until July when we decide what was our organization. So meanwhile, uh, we learned a lot. People uh, from the traditional parties try to explain what to do now because something is your ideas and the reality is something different. But in that moment we were dreamers, we accept, but we try to do it in our way. But now that we have uh, won the, the um, city town, uh, we, we we know like they were right in some aspects, but we have to do it in a different way. So the, the main thing is like, for example, in that moment, 
when the collation was formed, uh, everybody started to work in, in all the areas. And also it was an, uh, open to the citizens. Uh, through our web page, we open um, a special area where citizens can upload their ideas, what they want in the, in the, um, in, in, in the core of our um, political party and how we are going to do things. So there were some principles for us. I mean, everything has to be diverse, participate to everybody, has to be open, and it has to have like gender equity because there's no way like we are going to do a revolution without <laughs> half of the population. So it was like really key. And from that moment, everybody was so enthusiastic. There was a special, um, a special spark in that city. Like everybody believed that it was possible and there was no way like we, we wanted to win that election. It was a dream came true. Uh, meanwhile, for example, from our organizational committee, we were working in a in, um, document how to, create, okay, how to create our internal organization. So what we did is to try to, to ask to leadership from university, from opinion, to talk everybody. And they gave us a lot of inputs. How we could create a new organization way. And also, people from uh, the organization and from citizens that were participating. From that moment, we create a um, draft. And we won the election, so everything has to, to, to keep in standby for a while. And then we circulate this information, this initial draft to everybody in order they could make amendments. So it was key because everybody bought our project. They could change the things that they didn't want. It. Everybody had their own voice. And now we are <laughs> facing another challenges, of course, because two years after, there is a lot of things that we thought at the beginning they are not working, and also people are a little bit disengaged, and this is normal. We have to rethink about it, how we are going to um, attract people again. And, and also, and I think it, something that is key, everybody has to participate. I'm feeling that they are part of this big movement, and they have something to say, and we are going to listen and to gather all their opinion and make it reality. So after that. I will answer your questions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Adriana, not Michaela, but uh, it's the same, from Massa Critica, from now for Naples. And Massa Critica is uh, a political platform, a citizen platform, born with the aim of creating uh, a process starting from the local and uh, the social struggles uh, um, that experience new form of institution. The foundation of Massa Critica's work has been that of creating uh, um, a real experiment uh, of direct democracy. And Massa Critica has been able to achieve uh, some uh, outcomes. And one of these is creating a real dialogue between uh, and among subjects different, uh, coming from different experience, political and different uh, tradition, into uh, the creation of uh, an alternative to the um, institutional form classically identified still in parties. And uh, all of this has taken place while uh, the most actor in our city were the final lenses to obtain uh, some seats uh, or some votes. Uh, while we decided to be assertive regarding the election campaign, imposing the political agenda to all uh, the candidates. And this is possible because uh, um, uh, the case of our work is to 
try to include uh, all the claims uh, coming from different experience of struggles uh, into a unique perspective. And we are talking about uh, of the struggles um, against, uh, uh, for example, to, to the respect of the environmental, for the people or rights, uh, that talks about uh, some main themes uh, as uh, welfare, salary, and um, income. And in this sense, uh, Bagnoli, that is the, um, the area where I live in and where I started my political experience, can be a prime example. Bagnoli is uh, the um, is one of the outskirts, uh, west outskirts of Naples, uh, and it is territory uh, in which the ter the local committees uh, have acquired a long, uh, um, a large consensus among the population uh, about the theme of the reclamation. That is a an essential theme in a territory that is being destroyed by asbestos and uh, heavy metals. And Bagnoli resumes uh, two kinds of development, one based on the profit and one based on the people. We are channeling the, um, the strength expressed in the squares into an horizontal decisional process called the popular assemblies. And the popular assemblies is one of the main themes of the internal discussion of Massa Critica. In 2014, the national government imposed a receivership on this uh, area uh, to create a development controlled by the center. And we opposed uh, dispossessing the local uh, authority. And we opposed uh, not local institution, but new institution called uh, Popular, popular assembly. Um, the internal organization of Massa Critica is divided between working groups and uh, a plenary. And the working groups are based on um, the assembly of the liberated spaces that are the results of experience of reappropriation of spaces. And the working group deals with some themes. Um, the main are uh, the common goods, the audit and the economy, and the new institutional. And the aim of Massa Critica was to convert uh, this proposal into administrative deeds. And particularly, we insisted on the approval of the resolu resolution of the civic use of liberal spaces and uh, the acknowledgement of this new type of institution that we are trying to, to build up. Today, Massa Critica as a justice task can redefine itself uh, as um, a tool through which uh, close attention can be paid uh, on the great, great theme of, um, of our city. And um, uh, this is the reason why we think that the, um, the audit on the public order and the shared balance sheet uh, um, are working well, but we are still in a phase of studying a new type of um, concrete uh, organization. This is the reason why we are very enthusiastic of being here, or participating in this meeting, because we are very interested in learning and listening to all the experience that nowadays have accepted the challenge um, to get involved in global and European level, um, always within the framework of the interpretation of the rebel city in a total discontinuity with a system of power that nowadays is imposed by the capitalist system. Um, now we are um, so in, a, in a phase of study. We are trying to understand how improve our organization, our connecting the basic organism like uh, works union or uh, collect students or association or foundation with the local realities. Um, this connection um, is, th is thought in order to um, improve the alternative that we uh, want to promulgate and to create a connection with the experiences of reappropriation and self-management of the liberal spaces. Uh, we want to underline that Massa Critica in Naples uh, 
has increased the public debate, ma this is thanks to the social and the political forces that are in our city and that allows to Naples to become a stronghold in the last few years uh, against the attacks of the Renzi government. From this we want to start to now because we believe that it's very, very important to keep building a network uh, among the city that we define nowadays rebel because uh, we, we need a network um, with our city that now is represents the overall fulcrum of the opposition to the policy national um, that will be promulgated in even more probable uh, round of voting. Hello, do you like to say? Has not worked? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we should speak. Okay, okay. Um, hello to all of you. Rojbash uh, means good day in my language. Uh, yes, I'm from the city called Diyarbakir. Uh, we call it also Ahmed, it's a historical name. Um, as the friend said, we are in a difficult situation, but uh, let's not speak about uh, the repression which we have now. Let's speak about what we tried in the last 10 years to build up. Um, so, uh, our municipality, I'm, mm, I was working, not anymore, uh, in this municipality, and I'm also part of uh, the so-called Mesopotamian ecology movement and uh, so I'm in these two structures. Anyway, um, um, so we have, for 10 years ago, uh, we started to set up uh, in the cities, in the most cities of North Kurdistan, it's the Turkish part, uh, as a pe people's assemblies. <coughs> this uh, has been started two years after let's say, after many years of discussion, a new political concept has been, let's say, declared. We call it democratic confederalism. Uh, we must understand this if uh, we want to understand why we have in so many cities all these different structures. The friend mentioned a democratic society congress. It's an umbrella structure. Anyway, um, the idea is basically to have a, a democratic, we say radical democratic, an ecological uh, and a, a gender liberated society. Uh, the gender liberated idea is important. What in the center is a liberation of women. Uh, we don't say equality. Uh, here I have to add uh, that actually another person should speak here. Uh, her name is Emine Özcan. She couldn't come because she couldn't get a visa by the Spanish uh, government. And I think this is a very likely political be approach because not only she, three other Kurds c also couldn't get a visa, also they applied at time. And I want to mention it this. Um, anyway, um, so I'm here to speak because she couldn't speak. Um, anyway, in 2007, we start to implement. But the idea, as I said, democratic, ecological, gender liberated, uh, the idea is to bring on local level and also on a higher level uh, the society, all the different actors uh, in a platform together and uh, a platform where each part of the society, social or cultural part, um, uh, has to discuss and find a solution for the questions, for the challenges. So this force uh, the different parts of the society to deal each with each other, uh, to find a consensus. Um, this impedes that one group, especially the one with the money, can dominate over the others. Um, we think that the society is one whole, and capitalism, or we say capitalist modernity, has divided us too much. 
and uh, we are fighting, we have many struggles, um, let's say from a democratic point of view, uh, but even we, the Democrats, the leftists, uh, have problems to uh, coordinate our activities or to work together. So, uh, the assemblies uh, have been establ established in the neighborhoods where people were already close, let's say, to the Kurdish freedom movement. What I say with the Kurdish freedom movement, it started 30, 40 years ago. It's not only the guerrilla of the PKK in the mountains of North Kurdistan, it's much more uh, the dozens and hundreds of organizations in the cities of North Kurdistan and also Turkey. And uh, yes, and so millions of people were already let's say, affiliated to a political movement. And the political movement had a long discussion and said at a certain point, especially in uh, 2005, no, we must change how we organize ourselves. We must try to be more really democratic, to be more inclusive, and not all parts of the Kurdish society support us. And some regions is a majority and some regions not. And uh, so uh, we must find a way where we bring the different actors together and, uh, and then establish relations, better relations to the non-Kurds in within the Turkish state, but also in the other parts of Kurdistan. Uh, especially this is now successful in Rojava and Syrian Kurdistan or in within Syria. Uh, uh, but the difference is in North Kurdistan we have a strong capitalism, a neoliberal one. Just when we started to uh, develop the practice of uh, democratic confederalism, uh, the AKP leader neoliberalism became very strong with the support of UAE, EU and USA and so on. And uh, so it was, also it was and is a hard fight. It's still this economic strong development uh, it's going on. This affects people, people and the whole society, of course. There's much more money, much more investments, and there's a pressure on uh, gentrification. Uh, our whole nature is on a big attack. Anyway, <coughs> so uh, the people's assemblies. So n in the neighborhood, let's say thousands, hundreds, or thousands of people started to gather. So people who were active in the political struggle um, started to say, okay, now we go to the neighborhoods. Or people from these neighborhoods uh, started uh, to call for a neighborhood assembly to convince people to come. F some parts were ready, but the majority not. Um, it's not so that the people who are support principally the general political movements comes to the assemblies. So it was a daily struggle. And then you should say to the people, okay, what we do now, okay, we have uh, gathered here, uh, but there's a strong state. And um, and we had this, uh, we had that advantage that the, let's say half of the municipalities at that time in North Kurdistan were ruled by uh, uh, the HDP, HDP is the People's Democratic Party, which is part of our general political movement. And so this was an advantage. Nevertheless, um, they are quite weak. Uh, they have much more, much less rights and capacities than here in Europe. Though the history of municipalities in the Middle East is different than here. They are much more weaker. So uh, what has been done, one point is very important. These are the peace uh, commissions in the neighborhoods. Uh, the peace commissions are important too uh, to solve an important part of the conflicts in the society. Each community, society is full of conflicts. So there, it's, this became a very important tool. And uh, so they parallel to the existing um, uh, courts of the state, where there was coming up uh, own structures. At the time, the people believed in this if they worked well. And the most worked well, but not all. And uh, and 
another two important thing was to think about the public space in the neighborhoods, how to organize it to defend you ourselves against uh, criminality. And uh, so uh, this work uh, continues, continued from uh, continues, continued for long times, but has been interrupted twice by repression, once uh, especially in 2011 and 12, when thousands of people have been arrested, and now for two years, when Erdogan decided to start the war again against the Kurds in Turkey and all the other Democrats. And never, so the repression is very high, so today we, the structures uh, are not like as I described. The most neighborhoods, they do not work anymore, really or are clandestine, and if they are clandestine, the majority is not included. So uh, how it works, uh, the, the neighborhoods, they have a coordination, many commissions, depends on their capacity, six to 10 or so. Um, in each, uh, then they have the delegates for the assemblies of city, then comes the province and North Kurdistan. And each we have the four levels, anyway. But uh, what's important is that on the higher levels, now uh, new actors come. These are, let's say, the different actors: political parties. We have two um, who support the system, municipalities, uh, the women movement, youth movement, ecology movement, my movement, uh, the education, health, and so on. Uh, unions, uh, NGOs, people from different cultures, so religious or ethnic. This is also very crucial uh, because such identities uh, are for many people very important. And uh, they define themselves through this religious identities, for example. And the Kurds have not only one identity, uh, religion, three at least, um, anyway, so in this level, higher levels, the different actors have to deal with each other. And uh, it's a very interesting mm, because uh, so we are, we are coming with our subjects, others come with their subjects, and you try to convince the others, the others try to convince you, and you, as you are politically close, have the basic ideas, you try to find a consensus, Sometimes it works, sometimes you have not solutions and takes more. Anyway, you learn uh, the interests or the argumentation of the others. So, so you don't think my subject is the most important one. And this is for me an important outcome. Okay, uh, continuing. And the political parties, ah. the political parties, uh, actually, the two are more or less at the same time. They are part of it, and they are not the dominant one structure. And what is discussed in the, uh, let's say, in the Dem upper assembly uh, of the Democratic Society Congress is binding for these political parties. So there are mm, city councils elected according to official Turkish law, but these uh, structures which I have are actually the most important one. If they work quite well, so the, of the official uh, municipal uh, city councils, they follow their decisions. If the parties from this our structure have the majority, of course. And there's the AKP especially, and some cities they are the majority. So, um, um, Continuing, um, what are the challenges? I mentioned them a little. I would describe themselves as uh, 5,000 years of hierarchy and patriarchy. <laughs> These are very deep things. So if, if we experience it very fast, I experience also like the all, uh, all the other uh, let's say many people, and uh, this is something which takes time, but it's important to struggle continuously against this and be aware of it. And uh, 
this 5,000 years issue we are mentioning sometimes very often. If you deal with Kurds, you will he hear it often. And um, anyway, the second dimension I would m uh, say is uh, capitalist modernity. We describe it the modernity of the last 100 years or 200 years, depends on the region, which came up with, the, with capitalism. Um, which destroys your agriculture, your way of living, the structures of solidarity, the communal life, and, um, and so on. So, um, for us, uh, about information flow, um, for us, uh, meetings face-to-face -face are important. So, let's say people delegated or kind of coordination they meet much more often, let's say every week, for example. The assemblies every one month, two months, depends. And uh, we have the dele system of delegates. They are elected mostly for two years, but you can call them back. Um, we use emails and social media, but mm, not very much. It depends. Young people, yes. The others, uh, no more. The others, much less. Uh, the face-to-face -face issue is for us important and going to the people and be insisting and uh, going again and again. For this you need a big capacity but we have many people who, who are ready to it and uh, if you create in your political structure a communal feeling a strong solidarity, you include many people. And uh, people have this feeling that they are uh, returning to their origin, means we are humans of social beings, then they can, uh, how to say, then they create a big potential. Anyway, um, yes, that was it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>
uh, but it's the highest concentration of black people as a population and by percentage uh, within the United States. Now, these are very important figures just given the social dynamics. So uh, just to be brief and not take, you know, so we have time for conversation. So um, you all are now getting a taste of Donald Trump, right? And what his politics are about and uh, his, his mannerism, his style, his aim and objectives. Um, so that's new for the United States on a whole, on a national level, at least for like 60 years, if not a little bit longer. Mississippi has been living with those type of racist, xenophobic, misogynistic politics basically forever. Um, and one of the things that gives, in, in all honesty, our organizing model a lot of strength and a lot of power within the population that, that it is, is because the white supremacy is so visceral, it's so upfront, it's so in your face. So it makes you know uh, options and contrasts are very readily apparent. So there's not a lot of liberal illusions about you know whether somebody's my friend or whether somebody's my enemy. It's pretty clear to most folks without having a serious deep political education who's who, who's what, and what they're about, right? So that means a lot of our work of trying to do a political education is actually already done by the other side of the equation and by the actual conditions that people are daily confronted with. And what our challenge primarily has been, what are we going to do about the conditions that we face? Not that you have to con convince people that they're living in effed up conditions, uh, which in the United States sometimes takes a lot of convincing for a lot of people that they're actually in a terrible situation uh, and, and that there's something that they can do about it to, to relieve that situation. So just to, to, for us, this uh, idea uh, in part about municipal uh, power really goes back, I would say, to about 1970 in, in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, Jackson State University was one of the sites of, uh, during the Vietnam War, it was one of the universities where the United States Army killed several uh, students. Many of you might know of Kent State, where Jackson State was right around the same time. So it just gives you a context for that. But there was an organization that took up a call in early 1970 called the Republic of New Africa, Provisional Government of the Republic of New Africa. And this was an organization of people of African descent, of black people, uh, that's created a declaration of independence and began fighting for sovereignty and self-determination on the basis of that declaration. That was done in 1968. Uh, and then in 1970, a move was made uh, to make uh, Mississippi the capital of this republic in the small area right outside of that. But the first place they moved to was Jackson, Mississippi. And immediately upon moving into Jackson, Mississippi, they were attacked by the United States government. Uh, and there was an armed confrontation that occurred in 1971, in August 1971. Uh, six people wind up being killed. Uh, about 50 people wind up uh, being imprisoned, uh, 11 of them for over 20 years. So that really is the genesis of what wind up becoming the focus of the Jackson Cush Plan, as there were a lot of young activists from all around the country who had answered this call and moved into Jackson to start doing organizing work in this community. So what you're seeing now with uh, the work of Cooperation Jackson or what you're seeing with Chokwe Lumumba being elected mayor is not a new thing. This is the product and the result of years and years and years of very patient, systematic organizing, which I think is a critical thing because a lot of people think that we're going to change the situation immediately. Organizing really doesn't work that way. Uh, at least not in our context, and I would challenge probably not in none of yours either. Um, so it's a long-term investment. But over the last 10 years, there has been what we would call a qualitative shift. That that work enabled us to have a kind of, a, number one, a citywide uh, presence, and now beginning a, a statewide presence. And it gave us an opportunity to really start experimenting with uh, particularly with running for electoral politics, right on the municipal level. And it first started for us as a test, quite honestly. We wanted to know after 30 something years of organizing, how many people who aren't directly in the movement uh, and aren't directly in organizing, 
what is our actual impact? What is our reach? How many people believe in what we believe in? And how many people are willing to fight for what we wanted to what we wanted to fight for? So that was the real beginning of why we kind of got into electoral politics, honestly. And from there, we found that very quickly there were a lot of people believed in what we believed in, uh, and it enabled us to win some elections. Now, the, the key challenge is what do you transform that, that kind of base into? What can you move it into actually put into practice to change the situation? I'm going to run out of time shortly, but um, some of the key things, and our vision is an evolving vision, and that's a key, key thing, I think, to understand both in our own thinking is from our organizations, but also what the response directly is from our people's assembly and from people's response in general that's constantly changing and shifting it. We call it in general, just as a shorthand, a transition city uh, vision. And it right now it has kind of like four pillars and there's a fifth which is emerging. So the first one is what we call the solidarity city. And that's, that's where Cooperation Jackson comes in. That's building a social and solidarity economy what we call economic democracy. Um, and we started using that before socialism because the United States generally, socialism is a terrible word. Uh, Bernie Sanders has kind of proven that a little bit uh, untrue to a certain extent, uh, but that's still our framework, even though for us it means virtually, virtually the same thing. The second component of that is something that's really becoming a new part of our vision, and it's something we actually learned from really studying in part Barcelona, and that's building a fab city, right? and really trying to integrate that in with the cooperatives and being able to use that to do local production and to, be, to enable our community to actually own and control the means of production, which historically is not something black communities have ever owned in the United States. Fundamentally, our history is we are part of the means of production have been utilized and owned as aspects of the machinery, basically, right? Um, so this is a new development for us. And it supports the third critical component of what we're trying to become, which is we call a sustainable city. We want to become a zero waste, a zero emission city by 2025. And this is very, very important for us because a lot of Jackson, if, if current projections are true, a large portion of Jackson will actually be underwater by 2050 if the seawater levels keep rising. And you got to know that a lot of the southern states are, are di disappearing real fast. Southern Louisiana, if you look at a map of Southern Louisiana and Southern uh, Mississippi, the map they show you is actually about 50 years old. It doesn't look like that actually anymore, right? So just keep that in mind. And the fourth part, point, real, real quickly, is what we call a human rights city, right? And the human rights framework is something that our organization, the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, has adopted primarily uh, from our taking on some aspects of the program and vision of Malcolm X and his articulation of human rights, which is not this individual notion of human rights propagated by the United States and the liberal aspect of it, but what we call a people-centered human rights, which is actually centered and focused on collective rights, collective struggles, collective interests, and in the struggle for self-determination. The fifth and the kind of emerging component uh, is what we call a worker's city, right? And this one is still very much emerging, but it's still, it's based upon uh, kind of a, uh, an attempt to build a broad co-op union which takes in uh, all of the working class people within the, within the city and put them under one big kind of umbrella union. Uh, similar to many might know like the IWW which is very different than how trade unionism is traditionally done in the United States. And the, the, the point of this is that we have some very particular challenges in our state, it's, it's what we call a right to work state, a right to work less state, which means unions don't, don't really have any power, uh, even though they're organized sectors in, in, in our community. But we have some real challenges that are confronting us, I'm not gonna have time to talk about, as to why this is, is a priority for us to really include it as a center part uh, of, the, of our, this transition uh, vision. And one of the critical components that we thought was kind of missing was to really put this notion of where this, union, this, this kind of worker city comes in is recentering human activity and like in a different way human rights as the center of the transformative process, particularly utilizing our labor to transform ourselves and our living conditions. So these are things that are coming to us and are being constantly developed 
as a core part of our, our vision. Uh, and I can talk more later. I know we're out of time. Now there is time for question, and then we will start an open discussion. But now just question and comments on what we have here. If you can please come here for the record. Yeah. Um, thank you all for that really awesome uh, presentation. I was just, um, all of you kind of mentioned, and I think you captured it the best, that this is kind of like a long-term uh, trajectory that's going on. And um, that this kind of organizing is slow. And I was wondering if you guys could go into the kind of ways that, or the organizing strategies that you all developed and what that actually looked like concretely. Because I think a lot of the times there's like a big difference between like, let's say like a more event focused politic rather than one that's kind of bit built around base, uh, building bases. And so I was wondering if you all could uh, elaborate a little bit on it. Uh, Daniel Gutierrez, Solidarity City Berlin. We will have more questions than you can answer. Yeah, I'm Jelle de Graaf from the Pirate Party Amsterdam. Um, I have a question. You've all talked a lot about uh, all your successes and what you should do, but I'm also very curious as to what you shouldn't do. So <laughs> please tell us what not to do if you're building up a citizen's platform. More questions? So we can have a first round of answer and then. I'm sorry, but I cannot be like really helpful in what to avoid in order to create a citizen platform because I joined them halfway through. So, but mainly for us, the activism of Barcelona, it wasn't, we didn't want to them to join us apart. I mean, it was just the individual people who can just be in the activism movements and also in, in the organization in Barcelona and Comun. So then we don't want to be uh, as an instrumental of the activism movement in order to, to translate that the objectives or whatever they want to the um, uh, city council. I mean, they have to be part of the process. They have to empower themselves. And the only way that you can do it is like through participation. I mean, they have to be involved. And <laughs> what else to do? So I would apologize for my um, English that I think is not excellent, but the first uh, question it was about uh, strategies, I mean, yes. And the second what we shouldn't do in a municipal platform. So I understand, no? Okay. Um, the strategies that we build up uh, were, um, are creating uh, um, the way in to convert uh, uh, a proposal coming from a horizontal and decisional process, so for coming from the inhabitants, uh, into um, the ad administrational deeds. So we want that the inhabitants could uh, influence the real politics and government of the city, and we want that the uh, that this could became a real process to the bottom up so and i link to the second question what um, i um, i talk about naples so i um, um, i think that in our city particularly what uh, we shouldn't do in a platform uh, in a municipal platform is 
trying to separate the base uh, um, of the social and um, uh, local um, struggles to the uh, topic of the government on the city. In Naples, it is impossible to create uh, a discussion on the themes of the government without a strong basis of the struggle, uh, of the main struggle in Naples. For example, the struggle for the salary, the struggle for um, the respect of the environment, the struggle for the rights, uh, for the welfare, are the bottom of all this process that talks about the government. We um, have the, the, the chance uh, to speak about the government because we have a strong story that characterizes our city of struggles that are uh, um, nowadays undertaken in, in our city and that characterize uh, our city as a um, fulcrum in in our uh, country. Um, very shortly, as I spoke a lot, um, <laughs> I would say except the uh, political purpose and f framework, be able to request everything and what you are doing, a kind of self-criticism and uh, to th rethink about what you are doing very well, not to be do dogmatic. Um, inviting people uh, which were not outside of you to join, but to offer spaces, think about it before. Uh, not to use a difficult terminology uh, to explain the relation things in the society more in less words, more I would not say simple, but something like this. Uh, it's good for the people you want to achieve and also for yourself. And, uh, the, p and the permanent education. And, um, education means different uh, levels. It can be an area where you go and stay together for days or weeks and, uh, you have a s and where you share. This is very important. Uh, then what's important never let the man alone in a structure so this creates more conservatism and uh, never uh, mean social or cultural groups in the society never uh, exclude them uh, even if they for 99 percent don't support you to think okay what i can do um include them and to fight always and always uh, to go to the uh, so-called poorest people to include them because they create a new dynamic always and always winning uh, for your struggle new people if you stay in your smaller group i don't know it's not so good um let me see things that i would for a warn against. Um, in our context, I would tell you, number one, um, don't think that the structure is going to actually help you. Um, you know, one of the things that we say is, is we are, we don't pursue uh, winning office and engagement with the state. Uh, we don't pursue that to think that we can manage the contradictions of capitalism. And I think most of, of us on the left at bottom line uh, think that it was kind of what our job is when we enter into office. And we say that that's actually an impossible task, particularly in the US uh, context. So it's, it's constantly trying to find ways to actually subvert the structure um, and to find more ways to, to enable people from the grassroots or from the bottom uh, to both be engaged and to make concrete decisions about their life that, that don't entail being curtailed or inhibited or blocked by the actual government, right? So it's about opening up space, not trying to actually expand that space to do more. Uh, but for us, it's, it's um, like we're very clear 
We're going to be in for a while, but not forever. Nor do we want to be in forever, at least in the form that it's in now, right? Um, the other thing that we would say from our uh, experience, um, um, don't, um, how would you say it? Um, don't discount charisma, but definitely don't rely on it. Um, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag in that I think, at least in our experience, we found that, you know, people will gravitate more to certain messages with certain kind of wording, phrasing, appealing. That's, um, I think if, for us, I would argue that's a, being socialized in, you know, a capitalist society, white supremacist society, patriarchal society, that there's still ways in which people respond to some of those things, even though they may be diametrically opposed to their existence, but they still will react to that. So it's finding a balance of like what gets you to the door, but then once you're at the door, how to have a, a deeper and real conversation that's more than about what the surface of what they see. Um, but it's a trick, it's a tricky thing. Uh, and for us, this question around like hierarchy is a, is a real question. Um, and because I think we've done so much to fight against it internally. Um, when Chokwe Lumumba died, uh, many people throughout the United States, many people on the left thought that that was the end of our experiment, that it was basically over, and that it was just like a one-man show. And even a lot of our base actually thought that too. And so it, it took a lot of work and persistence to be like, no, this is a vision, this is a platform, it's gonna move whether I'm alive, he's alive, the next person alive, there's people and there's organizing work that's grounded in it that's going to move this forward. Uh, and in terms of just methodology, I mean, uh, nothing beats a one-on-one, -on -one, a face-to-face -face meeting. So, you know, we have to, our thing is create encounters. And so we use, you know, the, the, I think that the most fundamental thing that we use in different occasions is door knocking. You know, go talk to people, talk to your neighbors, deliberately go to different parts of you know the city, talk to people. Um, other than that, we try to create in, environments where people get together. So we do a lot of like cultural activities, political activities, you know, uh, and you gotta do outreach for that in different ways and forms to bring people together. Um, I think a similar thing to Naples is, is we don't try to lead with like hardcore political conversations is more or less like, you know, what's up with you, what you're facing, what your challenges are, you know, what's the immediate kind of concrete need, start with there, and then go into more complex, you know, conversations or deeper conversations. And the point for us is to always try to connect, you know, the, the, the injury that you're confronting with the larger dynamic and the larger, you know, underlying systems of oppression that really are containing, confining, Repression You. Um, we have a radio show, which is very popular. Uh, ours is a similar thing. I mean, uh, social media is okay in Jackson, uh, but uh, you know, Jackson's kind of has an inverted bell curve of a population. So there's a good number of young people between say the ages of like 10 to 22 then about like 22, 20, 22 to about like 55, there's hardly like anybody there because most of that population uh, leaves. You know, they go find work in Chicago or New York or Houston or someplace, Atlanta, something like that. Uh, we're trying to change that dynamic because there's a lot of skill that winds up just being lost and drained. Uh, but the radio and things like that, for that older population that's 55 and older, they don't do social media. They don't do a lot of that. So you have to see them face to face. You have to talk in the mediums and, and methods that they, you know, are, are engaged in. And for us, that's the radio. In part, because um, there's black people control more airwaves on the radio. The TV is still pr predominantly, you know, very white owned, very white oriented, even in this, in this very black city and very black state, so people don't really take what they see to be true. A lot from the TV, it's just like entertainment, but it's not true. So we use the radio. So that, those are some of the, the dominant methods that we use as kind of methodology. Hi, 
Uh, my name is Caio, I'm from Bancada Ativista, we're a political movement in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, I have so many questions actually, but I'll try to be focused on something about continuity. So like, how do you sustain this? And I, I'd like to talk to about three different aspects. One is um, engaging people. Like, how do you maintain people engaged in the, in the process? We know that it's not everybody that wants to participate in everything at every time. So, um, and specifically in, in Brazil, and I think many of you could relate to this, the cost of participation is super high because if you have two jobs, three jobs, you have to take care of your kids, and uh, it, it's, it's impossible for you to participate in politics because you have to survive. Um, so I was wondering how to deal with this. Uh, with this cost of participation, with the moments, like how do you create moments and you bring together and how you don't let this, this fall apart. The second thing is more um, it, from a local perspective and a municipalist perspective, um, how what we're living in right now in Brazil is the, the national context, and I think you, you could relate to this everywhere, the national context, the context is always challenging us and pulling us out of it. It's, it's, it's asking for us to to, to position ourselves and to act in different levels. Uh, how do we don't get confused and how do we don't lose the focus or how does the municipalist connect to this, the, lo the, lo the locality connects to the, to, the, to the national level. And the third thing, more internally, um, how, how do you deal with, like, have you guys learned how to disagree and remain? Yeah. I guess my question um, also has to do um, quite a bit with the question of continuity, but um, I'm from Indianapolis um, in the United States, and our organization is only five years old, so we're still trying to bring people together in a consistent way. And what we find is, you know, we get a group of people who will come out for an assembly and they'll be very excited, and then we divide into working groups and very p few people come to the working groups, and then we have another assembly, and it's all new people, so it feels like we're starting all over again in building the platform. So I'm curious about how we kind of keep people connected in as we build the platform. Hello, uh, my name is Anna from Zaragoza and Comun. I would like briefly to ask you, uh, tell me two limits and two risks that municipalism uh, has in these moments from your experience. Thank you. Two limits and two risks that municipalism has in these moments in Barcelona and Comun from their experience. So we can, um, the answers and Sorry, I'm gonna try to remember everything. I mean, I'm gonna start in order, otherwise I'm gonna forget. I think for us, I mean, we have to admit it like nowadays we are struggling to, to keep the people engaged because for us it was like a wave of people. They were so engaged, so enthusiastic, and obviously you cannot keep that level all the time for, four, for a period of four years. But what we are um, organized, it, we have like neighborhoods assemblies that they decide what they want to talk. I mean, they can relate it to their own problems like uh, from noise, urbanism, wherever. And, and after that, they have two representatives from each of these territory basement spaces that they, they have to go to the coordination committee where we can discuss and debate what we can do. So if we have a general idea, then we propose to implement it or go to the plenary where everybody can have their saying and vote it. Um, so I think basically is, is to have the, um, the balance between they have to be uh, themselves organized, 
but at the same time, you have to guide them and to try to have the overall um, idea and where are the key things. But, mm, and also for us, it's a huge challenge for us is to, to be able to have your personal life working, and this is one of our aims, and you know, probably there is something that nowadays is really affects us, like people are really tired because the most engaged, talented, or visible people, they went up to the institutions, and the rest of us, we have to keep trying and engage people, uh, but that's why we have to evaluate ourselves of the time, and um, because our term is for two years, so at the end of this term, which will be ended at sept in September, so the, I mean, we can have a transition. Maybe something will change it a bit. I mean, and then we have more time to think how we are gonna keep the balance like one of these limitations is not try not to be a traditional party how we are going to make it because we have to be a structure um, nowadays it's so different if you are ruling a town as Barcelona but we we don't want to be in two years time or four years times like another traditional party we have to change it and I think we have to give voice to everybody I mean, I think the, the collective intelligence is so valuable. I mean, we know more than we thought, or we think, sorry. And this is key. I think maybe ideas will come from all over places. Or, and the most, uh, maybe elderly people, like you know, so-called poor people, they know what they want, or at least they, they know what they don't want. So we, we can learn a lot of things. And also at the same time, what we do is a constant education, as uh, Kali said. I mean, for example, right now we are um, writing a policy for ruling the internal elections. And first of all, what we thought is we have to learn, you know, all the possibilities because maybe body, everybody has a strong belief is, okay, we have like open list or whatever, but most of us, we are not so well educated in that aspect. So we invite um, leaders of these opinions from university and we have like, uh, like internal schools and workshop where everybody can participate and learn. And um, I'm a bit lost. I don't know. The other question was, uh, huh? uh, and the limits. And um, uh, this is two limits. <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, and the limits. I mean, the limit is, is we have to learn about the, how to fill up the gap between the institution and the policies that we are like really fighting back to win the city back for us and the organization. I mean, there is a, um, it's just because they are working so much, they don't have time and we are not able to enrich them and to feed them back where new ideas. So this is a huge limit and a challenge at the same time. Um, I mean, hopefully we're gonna figure out and open up for a discussion and have a, you know, the right time to have a strategic view. We have to think strategically. I mean, for us, uh, because we have a successful story and we grow so fast and there is time for us to think about it. And the other limit is like, when we um, sign this ethical code, we were so optimistic. I mean, this is our goal. I mean, we are not gonna give up our fight, but the things are not that easy. And 
this is um, a, a key um, argument that we have to connect with our people, try to explain like we are, I think we have to improve in our, um, um, communications because maybe you know the results are a bit disappointed now, nowadays for most of citizens of Barcelona it's like okay and also the medias are against us like you came here and you promised us like you would change everything how you have done so far and this is something that we have to create this storytelling the, the reality but we are keeping in that fight and we have done a lot of things but maybe the results are not yet to come it's like we have to wait a bit more but we can ask people for patience uh, although we should practice patience <laughs> okay thank you so to um, increase the participation we try to make the inhabitants the protagonists of the horizontal process decision, the decisional process. And this is possible, or we are trying to do this, because we try to cross the inhabitants' life, um, talking about the material needs. And there's a, a connection between the aim, for example, of the working groups that talk about some topics, and the aim of the struggle that there are in our city. So we talk uh, of oh, what really don't, doesn't work in our city. And this is the, um, the reason why we create this popular assembly. Popular assembly has two levels. One um, deals with the daily problems, life of the city. And the other one um, try to um, hide the level, the, the challenge. For example, Bagnoli, the, the popular assembly of Bagnoli, this, um, the industrialized area, has two levels. One is to the daily, uh, deals with the daily problems. And the other one as channeling the strength of Mm, expressing the square to oppose the against the national government so is we are trying to mm, elevate the level but uh, if you don't if you don't talk about the problem the material needs you can't uh, elevate the level, the politic level. And this is the connection between local and national, because we have one enemy, and uh, this the national government, the, the, the power form, the forms of the power that the system imposed. So every city try to do the, the practice, the, the best practice uh, for its contests, and Napoli is linked to other city. But it is the fulcrum, or has been the fulcrum against uh, uh, the attack of Renzi. And I'm, I'm difficult to say a limit uh, of a municipal platform because we are in a phase of studying and we are external from the administration. We don't run the election, but we are, we have crossed directly the electoral campaign, imposing the, our politi political program to the candidates, particularly um, the approval of the resolution of the civic use of liberal, sp liberal spaces, and we are trying to make uh, real institutions place our popular assemblies. But I think that a limit could be the risk uh, that the municipal platform um, remain isolated from the rest of um, the struggle. I mean, I think that municipalism is a, a very, very, very important instrumental, instrumental to 
affront uh, a struggle that is very, very large, very, um, that includes other teams and other enemies. Um, about the continuity, um, I mentioned education. Uh, education means discussion and self-criticism and to, to think strategically, uh, what the friends uh, mentioned. It. This is very crucial. Uh, actions are, of course, a tool, uh, uh, doing actions and so on. I would uh, emphasize also two other points. First, remember martyrs. We have a lot of war, thousands of martyrs, and each fa almost each family is affected by this. To remember this is for us very crucial. The second point is to create a, a solidarity of finance. I mean, uh, people who can don't be are so active they can uh, support and financially and this would allow activists we try to do is widespread as much as possible and, and also to create a kind of step by step a uh, solidarity economy of solidarity step by step if you are a movement if you have many people behind you you should think also about this it can have different forms. Wha the most wa famous one are the cooperatives. Um, the nat national contest, yes, we are very affected, uh, especially with uh, this government, Erdogan, in the last years. You have followed also. We are waking up every morning, what's going on, what's happening. So uh, there are wars, coups, military coups, I don't know what. And uh, you have sometimes uh, you have to take a position which is not easy. Sometimes it's very easy, it's clear. But sometimes if others to, let's say, more nationalist, conservative, reactionary powers fight each other, what do you say to this? Um, s at least I would add s that uh, to discuss about strategy is important, about structures is important, about principles, but also sharing stories is crucial. Uh, somebody asked a question about um, staying together during differences. Who is? I can tell you in our context, we will soon see. <laughs> um, um, you know, we just regained the mayorship just Tuesday. Uh, we won the election this Tuesday. Um, uh, but it, it's going to be a lot harder this time around because conditions have dramatically changed than what they were four years ago. Um, historically, we have a good practice of uh, criticism, self-criticism, fighting it out, arguing it out, cussing each other out, and you know, staying together and working together, um, uh, not taking things personally. But I think there's going to be some choices this time around, which are going to really test principle. Um, and so, you know, uh, I don't have a crystal ball to read the future. I think that's the that's the aim and objective. Um, but it's going to be some real tough decisions that have to be made. So um, I think having enough clarity and foresight and remaining within the framework uh, of the principles, I think the, the one that, that concerns me the most is people not getting lost uh, in thinking that they can manage the contradictions of capitalism, because uh, I think that leads to some perilous paths. And, uh, uh, in our context, ultimately, it will lead you because there really are, either you play the game of neoliberalism or you confront it. There's really not much middle room. Uh, but I think, I, not I think, I know that the state government and the federal government, which are our governor and Trump are close, um, you know, they are already taking the fight to us with a bunch of preemptive 
politics. So some of the things that have just been done that they're going about real fast, number one, uh, they're making sanctuary cities illegal. They're making uh, fight for 15 campaigns illegal. They're making it illegal for, uh, uh, in Mississippi, they're making it illegal for cities to ban fracking. They're making it illegal. You know, there, there's a list. You can just go on and on and on. And uh, these are all things that are being supported on the federal level and they're being like written into law on the state level. And so one of the things that I talked about earlier about us, you know, trying to become a zero waste, zero city, they've already made it illegal that our state will not follow uh, any of Obama's climate plans. It will not follow adhere to anything around Paris or the UN regarding the environment. And so we have this trick of how do you do it, but not declare that you're doing it, right? And so it's, our, our position is, let's do it. And it was the old saying, we have a saying, you know, uh, do it and ask for permission later, you know, or, or, or do it and ask for forgiveness later, you know, like, um, so that's a, that's, a very, that's a very key thing that we're walking into this new situation thinking uh, that we're going to have to do. But one of the key things that's, that uh, we have to figure out, I think I mentioned it, is that our city is now, when we took over four years ago, there was no debt. This new administ administration that you know, superseded us has run up a serious debt. We don't even know how high it is. So we probably won't know until three or four weeks, really, until getting in the office and really can grill folks in the accounting office and the budgeting offices to find out what's really there. And then that'll really set some terms on this is what you can do, this is what you can't do, because this is what you can afford, this is what you can't afford. And then we're going to have to really think about, okay, how do we, how do we move past the financial limitations imposed upon the city? And then what are the limitations? of asking your citizens and your res residents to volunteer to make up the gap. And for us, um, we've always tried to turn one, one thing into an asset. So the real unemployment rate in Jackson is about 50%. That's the real unemployment rate. Uh, but there's a way of looking at that. One way of looking at it is like, that's a lot of people with a lot of free time, <laughs> right? Um, so how, do, how can we tap into that and, and get people to volunteer their time to do things to transform their quality of life? So we, we're trying to get away from any discussion about improving your, like, wages and all of the kinds. Not, not because we don't agree with it. We're one of the leaders for the Fight for 15 campaign in our city. But it's not that. It's a conversation about with the things that are readily available in our environment, we possess enough skill and enough resources that we can change certain aspects of our own quality of life. Like we don't, we can have food sovereignty to a degree in Jackson with the amount of available land that's there and the skill that's already there, right? And the resources that are already there. So why not let's create an organized system citywide to tap into that skill, to tap into the resource of the land that's already there and at least solve one major fundamental problem for our community, which is food access, food justice. And if you can take care of that basic aspect of your life without spending hand over foot to just to eat, it improves your quality of life. It may not put more money in your pocket, but you're not hungry, your health is better, et cetera. So those are things that we can grasp, you know what I mean, and like practically do with folks who have time, with folks who have energy. It's gonna take some organizing to get there, but I think it's already a clear strategy. If these are things that we can directly control, and the things that we can directly control, we should directly control. That's kind of our orientation. But, I mean, they're, they're coming with some stuff. So how we react to that is really going to be interesting. That's all I can really say. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marta Bosak. I'm from Warsaw, Poland. So we have um, next year we have a, a local government uh, election coming, and uh, as you may know, Warsaw has around two million citizens, and uh, we are associations. So miasto uh, jest nasze. So um, we are quite small. 
And we ha will have to make a coalition with other parties or local associations while uh, maintaining our identity uh, and making a change. We, have, uh, we are quite recognizable because we are around uh, social media. We are fighting with uh, some um, restitution uh, claims, sorry, reprivatization claims for buildings in, in Warsaw after the Second World War. Really complicated stuff. Uh, so uh, we have uh, quite uh, a momentum for a while, but uh, I have a question. Because you are Barcelona Comú, uh, you started from five orga organizations when you were you know, uh, going through elections. And you, uh, you too, you were going through elections. How to maintain uh, identity and how to um, open eyes uh, uh, of the city citizens. Because they think that uh, we have quite a polarized uh, political uh, situation right now. We have only two political parties. It's like Democrats and Republicans. And they fight all the time for everything. And we, uh, we want to open eyes uh, of our uh, citizens of the city, that the city should be, uh, should be in the hands of uh, local associations or parties. So one part of a question, how to maintain identity uh, going through uh, coalitions with other parties? And second part of a question is how to, uh, how to uh, bring uh, um, some um, knowledge and some uh, hope to the, to the people that uh, the city can be, uh, can be in the hands of uh, outside of a political party, that uh, city should be uh, in the hands of the citizens, not on the, of the politicians. So, thank you. Mm, and um, as the cross-cutting aim of all the Congress, or all the workshops, is to f the feminization of politics, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to ask you, I mean, first, um, what, I, uh, what I mean uh, saying uh, the feminization of politics, not just to guarantee the participation of women uh, in our organizations, but uh, also to um, do things in another way. Um, as Yolanda already mentioned, um, the collective uh, intelligence um, to not uh, use ourselves just like tools to achieve some goals and so on, but to take care for each other. Um, to uh, It's a different management, a uh, different way of uh, do things, of organize ourselves and so on. So I would like to ask, how do you put into the language of practice uh, those values? I mean, mm, as well, how do you mm, guarantee the participation of women? Re in, I mean, really practical answers please <laughs> and how do you um, real how do you put into language of the practice uh, those values uh, if you do so because if and if you don't please explain yourself <laughs> Cannot remember your name, Marta. Um, I think for us, how we change the mentality of people from Barcelona, from the citizens. I mean, obviously there was this feeling like everybody couldn't stand the situation anymore, but every, everybody was depressed. I mean, it was amazing because we are so outgoing people, and you can tell for the faces of people everywhere. Everybody was talking really pessimistic. But I think it's something in general that we think like another way 
of doing things is possible. And for this is why, after the manifesto, we, we have a lot of attention from media. So our uh, message uh, went through to all people. And then, little by little, for uh, it was crucial that part of the process, we went to the neighborhoods. So people, I mean, voluntaries, common people, they were just um, trying to have a real conversation with their neighborhoods in assemblies, maybe just in the square. I mean, we put a little bit of a stall and they were giving up, you know, the programs. But, you know, to have some ideas like, uh, and also asking them which are where the key measure, measurements that they want to be included in, in our electoral program. So people that were building up the program, it was no idea. Oh, some people they were just, okay, we need to address this, this, and we are gonna do that, that. No, no, I mean, they were part of the process and they had, so I think this is the only way that you can empower people and also it's just okay to to keep saying this message like another way of doing things is possible you have to empower don't stay at home if you want to change i mean myself it was like i'm not coming from any political party neither of any um activism i was just a citizen like i was like really fed up about the situation i was like if not now when i mean this is the moment <laughs> i have to step up um, this is my struggle this is my fight i mean because our rate of um unemployment employment in spain was like really huge as well and also i think we reach a lot of people, they were unemployment and they, they wanted to change the things, they want to have their saying. And if, if you just give them just, you know, a way that they can speak up, so, and it's more because it's true. And you can tell like when something comes from heart and it's truthful to you. Um, and I think this is, was part of the process. Like we really work in the territorial, space in the neighborhoods um, we allow to them to create the the electoral program and so on and the other thing is like for us at least in barcelona and Comun, um we are really engaged in the um, feminine feminism movement and for us it's like the revolution without women is not possible we cannot think about it so nowadays we have to face like in not in all the areas we can have um, this equity. So it's not because maybe it's just an education uh, theme. Like a lot of people like are coming from these movements are really activists, but some of them, like myself, are a bit shy. We haven't. This is my first time talking in public. I'm, I was f really scared like <laughs> one hour ago. But you know, like if you are just participating in those spaces, um, be patient because uh, I was involved in the organization committee. Everybody was so expert. They were coming from political parties. So I learned they were generous to me because they teach me and they uh, allow me to express myself and be like really careful with the language. I mean, we have to be more inclusive and especially we have a lot of abilities that we can put in place. So in our case, we have some committees like the policy committees. There are people and we have the um, feminist group that are thinking about policies and things, measurements or whatever, we can implement it and put it into practice right away. So I think it's this kind of approach that we are, we are learning, it's a, a learning process and we have to try to our best to change our, thing. but thanks God we have, you know, our leadership is a strong woman with a strong voice. <laughs> this really helps a, a lot. Okay. Yes, and how about ideas? Ah, for, uh, 
Okay, the identity, okay, I'm not coming from any political party, but the rest of my colleagues are. So, um, I think because from my point of view, uh, I cannot tell, like, but everybody really was in the project, I mean. So, when you are working in Barcelona and Comú, there is no political parties, there are not sides. We are working for a common project, and I think, um, this is something that we are like really thinking about. So if you identify like a key or two key projects trans, uh, transversas and getting people involved, um, they have to be generous, but this is the only way that you can have your own arguments and your identity outside. But everybody is like really into the, uh, this project and feeling themselves or oh, um, put aside the differences because the project and reality for us is more important. But sorry, I cannot help you anymore longer. So about the first question, in Naples we are facing up for the first time the team of the government of the city because Naples, as I said, as an history of mm, social mobilization and struggles and conflicts. So we mm, nowadays are trying to imagine to create uh, an organization which connects uh, the organi organism, basic organisms, local realities and mm, different subjects that want to face up the team of the government, government on the city, but without leaving the plan, the level of the struggle. We don't know how it is the best mo model, mm, but we are studying, we are trying, and we made an organization that doesn't, um, doesn't develop from the, from the bottom to the eye, no, not vertical, but horizontal, a process uh, um, that could be in this way, not as a, a classical party uh, with reference, uh, with um, um, dele delegates, I don't know, okay. And in Naples there are a lot of basic organisms and we want to imagine an organization that um, doesn't consider only the organization but the single person that assume the responsibility of the of this challenge of the government of the city. So in in order not to run the election, but to impose uh, a concrete uh, pro politi political program to the main themes of this city that could uh, create a discontinuity in all the country. And could you answer a question about the feminism? Yes, the feminists, yes. Sorry. Um, about this team, all this, this, um, this topic is at the, at the beginning in Naples, but we imagine it as a tool that could cross uh, every area of the movement of the politics. So we imagine that the feminization is a, a practice, not a single area, but a practice that could cross also uh, the, m the social movements areas because uh, unfortunately also the movement uh, is not or not yet separated from the prejudice of the society. So we, for changing this world, we have first to change ourselves you but to say that the feminism is not just a theory but practice it's also a theory <laughs> uh, I, I my what question is of course but for example in Barcelona and Comu uh, we have like ki kindergartens let's call it no and uh, this is some practical uh, solution f uh, to make uh, possible that women uh, can participate. Uh, this is some just an example. And how do you use that in your uh, organization? We are not an organization. 
but we are not uh, a strong based organization. We are a lot of collective and basic organisms that as facing this team in our citizen platforms. So I, I say this team of the feminization is settled in, in Italy and Naples, but at the beginning, uh, in, in a perspective of equality of rules uh, that could settle in every, in every um, space of areas of activity. Uh, I have forgotten something very important to say when I spoke uh, about women, women liberation. Uh, we have in the municipalities and in all movements, other structures, a co-chair system. It means each organization, each municipality has a man and women at the top. Uh, each council, each assembly, there should be at least 40% of each uh, genders. It was highly discussed, but in the end, after many years, uh, it created a real strong women participation. Behind the women is a women movement. So almost all the women, and for example, the municipality, they have uh, their women movement in their back, which gives them strength. Um, uh, in the municipality, the number of employees uh, of women is increasing in the last three, four years. Um, so all the areas, all the spheres which were, uh, where men worked, like bus drivers, there are more women. Uh, the municipalities support economically as a pressure from the women movement, uh, women cooperatives. Uh, number is not yet big, but it's increasing. In Rojava, it's much, much more. And uh, there are a lot of women organizations, structures, academies, and uh, <coughs> and this creates a strong, uh, let's say, strong uh, influence of women in the movement. The, with the other movement, it's not so strong, let's say from the ecology or economy or so, but they have also there, through this uh, structure which we have, this... Uh, common assemblies of all these different movements, municipalities and so on, there's a tool, a mechanism that the other social movements or NGOs, they have an influence on the municipality, an um, insured influence. This creates a dynamic where the municipality must consider the others. So uh, there's a in, in balance. And this creates, uh, this, um, how to say, this leads to the, this limits the alienation of municipalities to the population. Uh, just briefly, I know in uh, cooperation Jackson, we have the same um, principle of equality, but we are actually challenging it um, on the basis of sexuality and gender equality. Uh, which is not to be a subs one is not a substitute for the other, as we say. Uh, so we don't necessarily. Uh, so as you guys say, the, the feminization of politics. One of the things that's internal to us, is we've been saying the queering of politics, uh, particularly in our environment. Jackson is a. It can be very politically progressive to radical, but it's socially very conservative. Right, there's a very strong Christian movement there. Um, and there's a defense within the general population that you have in the community. There's kind of a defense of patriarchy, which has long kind of very specific historic roots in the black community. Um, and then there's sometimes outright hostility towards, you know, LGBTQ community that that we confront. So this is one of the internal contradictions that we are facing is something that as an, as one element or, of the organ of this movement we are trying to be at the forefront of pushing uh in part because of who our membership is. I mean, we have a lot of young people who are uh queer, and they're not giving it up, they're not backing up, they're not going to go in the closet, they're not going to hide, and we're not encouraging, we're asking them to. Um so that's one particular piece of it. Um, and that has created, you know, a lot of interesting 
conversation and discussion around maintaining even in our opposition and even in trying to, to uh, um, be more inclusive to everybody and not leave anyone behind, you know, um, different issues of representation. Um, because there's some ways in which there's an argument that's being made by, by elevating their, their principle of queerness in some ways we're recreating patriarchy. That's a long conversation, but it's one that, that's actively being had and struggled in, in our organization, in our community. But the general principle is that for every position, uh, there's a male and female piece. This is something that we have adopted from the Malcolm X grassroots movement, which has also adopted this principle from the early 1990s as a direct result and challenge of uh, the women in the organization and the women's movement pushing back and fighting back. It's not like it was readily adopted, just to be honest, you know, and that's an ongoing struggle, push and principle. It's not a completed project uh, in any form or fashion. Um, and as you mentioned, the, the prejudices of the society are deeply within uh, the movement uh, and they're deeply within ours, particularly within our context. So that's the ongoing piece of, of work and struggle. To your question, I don't know if there's anything I can offer, actually. Um, But I mean, but there's, but there's also profound differences in our si political yeah. systems, you know. But that could work against you as well. So in our case, like, you know, in our case in, in Jackson, we are known as the radical nationalists and, and the, the commies, right? And that is, in, in our context, those are not two good things, right, in, in the U.S. general context. And so part of the struggle for us is getting people to believe that once we are in office, we won't just represent our own people. Right, so it, it, it's 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 people been wanting the assurances. If I'm white, are you gonna kick me out? If I'm white, can I come to your meeting? And we're like, we never said you couldn't come. We never. So it's it's in part demonstrating and upholding the democratic principle, not losing your identity, but upholding the democratic principle that everybody should be included, has to be in dialogue, you know, and not excluded. But it's for us, it's also, you know, we are very clear. We want you to be whatever color, age, sex, gender, we want you to be a part of the process because all human beings have value, all human beings have a right to be on earth, all human beings have the right to be anywhere on the planet. They want to be with principle, with the indigenous peoples of whatever land that they're inheriting. But our basic piece is you don't have the right to oppress people, you don't have the right to exploit people, you don't have the right to harm people. So rights in conflict is something that we uphold. It's like you have the right to be here, but if you're gonna, if you think you're gonna come here to exploit me, we're gonna fight. If you think you're gonna come here to oppress me, we're gonna fight. If you think you're gonna come here to hurt me, we're gonna fight. If you can accept that and accept everybody here as equal and as a human being, everybody has a right to be here. But the second those behaviors show up, be prepared for a struggle, right? So I don't, to me it's like the, the identity is, is can be both positive and negative. And I think for us it's like there are times when it has to be a positive assertion, but there's also time when it gets in the way, right? And, and I think it's the, the, it's the struggle for wisdom to know which one is which, right? Because you know, if I'm in an all black audience, I'm not arguing about my identity, right? At least not in my own context. I'm not arguing about my identity, right? Not as a black person. I may be struggling around, I'm rich, and you poor, or something like that. You know, it, so identity takes, there's not one identity that any of us have is my point, right? We, we have multiple identities, you know, and, and they, they show up at different times in our daily life, in our daily context, depending on what the relationship is.
I think you have had a good sum up of all the, the discussion, so lunch time. <laughs>